Have you seen this meme? It's true that the fast API performance is really, really fast. I think that's why its name is fast API. But it's a Python framework which is really, really mind blowing and very easy to use. But what if you can use the same fast API with Docker? So I had created one fast API course, which is the bestest video of my channel. So I thought that how it would be good if I can use Docker to set up the fast API on my local machine. In that way, I don't have to create the virtual environment. I don't have to worry about what Python version I'm using and I can isolate everything inside a container from my local machine. And one more benefit, what if you can give the Docker file and the Docker compose file to your friend or the colleague so that they will have the exactly same environment where you are working on your local machine. Whether it's Mac OS, Linux, Windows or any operating system, it will going to work exactly same. You just need Docker and that's it. So, it's now time to see how we can use Docker to set up for fast API. So welcome to Bitfumes. I'm your host Sarthak and this video is Dockerizing the fast API with ease. So it's now time to get started. But before I will say that, hey, if you think that this video is helpful for you, smash that like button and give me some likes because I am hungry for likes. No, that's not the case. But if you genuinely feel that this video is helpful, your like will encourage me to create more such kind of videos. And if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing by hitting that subscribe button. So two things you have to do if you think this is a good video. One is smashing, hitting that like button and hitting the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. So let's now start this video. To dockerize our fast API application, we first need to create a virtual environment. So on the terminal, I'm going to type Python 3 VENV with a hyphen M flag and I'm going to call it VENV. So we can just say, hey, we want to have dot VENV. It's up to you, whatever the name you want to give. So since I have given dot VENV, you can see the dot VENV directory is there. And now my VS code is saying that, hey, is this a new virtual environment? Do you want to activate it for your workspace? And I say, yes, this means whenever I create a new terminal, you can see my virtual environment is automatically activated. Now, if this is not by chance activated on your VS code, then you just need to say source and then go inside this VNV bin and hit this activate file, which is like this. So dot VNV bin activate and this will activate your virtual environment. Now, once your virtual environment is ready, it's time to use pip3 to install various things. First, we need the fast API, obviously. And also we need UVicon like that. So these two will be installed inside our uh, virtual environment. And once this is done, we can get started by writing our fast API code. So first of all, here I say, from fast api import fast api and then create an app of fast api like this and once this is done then we need to simply create a function so i say hey function is going to be the index and index means returning the message of hello world but to make it a simple route so that we can hit it we just need to say hey app dot get on the slash that means if i go on the base url then it will return message as hello world now it's time to run how we can run remember we have installed the uv icon so we say uv icon and then we define the file name which is called main and the app name which is app so colon app once this is done you can see if i go on localhost 8000 we have this hello world message wow our Application is ready. The first thing we need to do is pip3 and we need to freeze to all the requirement to requirements.txt file. 
Once this is done, you can see all the requirements we have is here on our requirements.txt file. Great. Now, very first thing we need to do to dockerize it is create a docker file. Now, in this docker file, I'm going to use from Python 3. Point, which one? 9, 10, 11? Which one we should use? So let's go to the Docker Hub, search for Python. So Python, and here we go. So Python image is with the latest version of 3.9. And we want to use the slim version. So 3.9, and I'm going to use the slim version. Great. Then I'll define the work directory. So work dir is going to be the app. And then I will copy everything from requirement.txt to requirement.txt inside this work dir, which is already defined. Then we say, hey, run pip3 installation. So once we have all the dependencies in our container, then we run this command inside of the container once again. Once everything is there, then we copy the code. So that's why we say dot and dot. So first dot and the first requirement.txt whenever we write means the local file. So when I say requirement.txt, I mean local requirement.txt. And second, if I type requirement.txt, that means it's going to be inside of the work there, which we have defined as the app. Once this is done, then it's going to be simple. We just need to say command and then instead of whatever this uh, GitHub Copilot is suggesting, we need to say uvicon main app and I think that's it. Great. So we are done with this and now let's see how we can run it. So let's build the image. So I say docker build and I'm going to give a tag called fast API and say dot means find a docker file in the root directory. So it's going to create a docker file for me and if everything is working fine, we should see successfully creating an image. So it's creating and installing, everything is done. Now if I say images, now I have this fast API image, I can run it. So docker run and right now I'm going to use rm which will be like once the container is done then remove the container so that we don't have a bunch of containers. IT means interactive. We define port as 8000 because remember we had the 8000 and the image name is fast API. Once this container is going to run, I want to run the bash on it. You can see bash is there. Now we are inside of the container. That's great. If I ls, you can see main.py is there. Requirement.txt is there. Docker file is there. If I do ls a, then you can see we also have venv. Why do we need the virtual environment inside of our container? We don't want that. So for that, we need to create a docker ignore file. So we say dot docker ignore file and we say, hey, I don't want to push venv whenever we create any image. Okay. So I'm going to press control D to get out of the container. And that's why I use the RM flag so that we will not have unnecessary container here. So I'm going to remove the image. So remove image of fast API. Basically, I'm going to remove every other image so that it will be really cleaner. Now, so it's done. And then I say Docker build fast API once again, and it has created. So docker run container once again. And now if I say LSA, you can see we don't have the .venv file. Now it's time to run the application and see if we will be able to see that on localhost 8000 or not. And remember, we just need to say v, uh, sorry, uvicon main app. It's good. You can see 127.0.0.1.8000 and it should work. But no, because here, instead of this local host, what we need to do, we need to say, hey, the host is actually 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0. This is the one which we are going to use so that this will be the default to the outside of the Docker container. And now if we run it, you can see this hello world is there. Now, since we are able to successfully run this container, 
and uh, create this image time for the docker file so that we don't have to write all that thing like this on our terminal every time so what we are going to do is we need to create a compose file compose.yaml so compose.yml and now version of this is 3 uh, so not hash 3 <laughs> then which services i'm going to use so services is going to be the web and this is actually the container i'm going to use and then i'm going to say hey build from dot now dot means the root file where the compose file is find a docker file and build an image from that now i need to define some ports and port is going to be 8000 um 8000 colon 8000 this is the port which we are going to map so yes that's it so i'm going to just see if we have any container or not no there is no container any images yes we have the image so i don't want to get this image so i'm going to remove it and now i will say docker compose and i will use up command so when i say docker compose up it will go inside this compose.yaml file and then it will create the container called web and inside that it will create the image from this docker file and define the port right here so see it says it is once again created on localhost 8000 no remember i have to use the host of 0.0.0, .0. so why it's doing that first of all how this command is running remember when i defined the docker file inside that we done all these things but last command is really important this command only run when you create the container out of this image so when we create the container out of this image this command runs which is normal so i need to say hey i'm going to say host is going to be 0.0.0.0, .0. once this is done then we can uh, stop this container or stop this docker compose by pressing ctrl c and it will take exactly 10 seconds right here and once again i run this compose up and this time it still using this why remember this uh, where is that remember this compose create the image and once the image is created it will not create it again and again so there is one way that you can obviously go remove the image and then recreate it but instead of doing that what you can do you can use a flag called build now this flag will say that every time you run the compose file do not use already image create the image if there is any image to be created now it has created and you can see since the new image is there it is now using this 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 and we can see localhost 8000 hello world is working let's try to change something and hello bitfumes and go here reload this hmm it's not working why because we need to sync our local machine with the docker how do we do that so when we define the compose.yml we need to define the volume also and here we say that whatever we have here on the root everything will be synced to app directory which we have defined here on the image okay so that's going to be really helpful and once again we need to kill this docker compose and this time instead of using docker compose up only i'm going to use docker compose up but one more thing we need to do i recall that and which is reload flag on the command when we create the container out of the image so that's great and if i run build and you can see everything is good and now if i go here you can see bitfumes dot 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 and now if i remove these dots and go here reload bitfumes is there and server is detecting the changes wow that's really great so this is how you can use the fast api with docker and if you have any question related to docker related to fast api and how you can combine both of them you can ask me in the comment section and also if this video is helpful smash that like button and if you are new to this channel consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button and i will make sure to give you a proper informatic and really amazing videos so we will meet in some other videos till then goodbye